story of a parrot. Uh, this is a short story, Tota Kahiri in Bengali. And Dr. Tirthankar Bosch will be reading uh, from this uh, um, short story. And then one thing, Dr. Um, Tirthankar Bosch is a member of the board of directors of Vancouver Tiger Society. Please welcome Dr. Tirthankar Bosch. Once upon a time, there was a bird. It was quite illiterate. It sang, but didn't know its scales. It hopped about, danced, but not to roots. The king said, what is this such a bird? It eats fruits in my orchard, and the fruit market runs at a loss. He summoned his minister and commanded him, teach that bird to act properly. It fell upon the king's nephew to educate the bird. The pundits spent endless hours debating the question. What could be the cause of the bird's illiteracy? They concluded that the bird's nest, built out of twigs and straws, couldn't hold much learning. So the first task was to build a proper cage. Showered with fees, the royal scholars went home happy. The goldsmiths built a gilded cage. It turned out to be so gorgeous that people from faraway lands rushed to see it. Some said, the pinnacle of education. Others said, education or not, the cage is great. With a sack filled with rewards, the goldsmiths went home laughing. The scholar sat down to educate the bird. He took a pinch of snuff and declared, not a matter of just one book or two, the nephew called for scribes. They copied manuscripts into mountains of copies and copies of copies of copies. Those who saw this said, bravo, what a flood of learning. The scribes filled their hearts with rewards. They went home and never again had to work. There was no end to the care. The nephew took over the precious cage. Repairs were constant, and seeing the pump of all the cleaning and polishing, everybody said, such progress. Hundreds were employed on the job, and even more to watch over them. Month after month, they filled their coffers with fat salaries. Now, there may be many things wanting in the world, but of critics, there is never a shortage. They said, the cage keeps getting better, but nobody cares about the world. When this reached the king's ears, he called his nephew and said, Nephew, what is this I hear? The nephew said, Your Majesty, if you really want to hear the truth, call the goldsmiths, the scholars, the scribes, the craftsmen who maintain the cage. Those critics have empty bellies, so they thought at everything. It all became clear to the king with this answer, and the nephew was rewarded with a gold necklace right away. The king wanted to see for himself the furious pace at which education was speeding ahead. So one day he arrived at the cage with his courtiers and ministers. As the king drew near the building, there were long blasts of bugles, drums, and a huge cacophony of hundreds of musical instruments to announce the royal arrival. The scholars shook their top knots, cleared their throats, and shouted their chants. The masons, the goldsmiths, the scribes, the clerks, and all their relatives raised their voices to hail the king's arrival. The nephew asked, Your Majesty, do you see these arrangements? The king replied, Wonderful indeed. So much noise. The nephew said, It's not just noise, Your Majesty. A lot of money has gone into this. Satisfied. The king crossed the threshold and was about to mount his elephant. Just then, a critic hiding in a bush whispered, Your Majesty, have you seen the bird? The king was startled. Oh my, I totally forgot I haven't seen the bird. <laughs> he turned around and asked the scholar, I want to see how you teach the bird. He was shown how. He was delighted. The program was so much bigger than the bird itself that the bird couldn't be seen. Actually, it wasn't even necessary to see it. The king realized that the project lacked nothing. There was no food or water in the cage, but it was stuffed 
with reams of pages from hundreds of textbooks that were being thrust into the words week with wheels. Not only could the word not sing, it would not even cry out. It was thrilling to watch the process. This time, as the king mounted his elephant, he ordered the leader of the royal ear pullers to box the critic's ears real hard. Day by day, the bird slowly became half dead. His guardians thought that was a very hopeful sign. Yet, incurably wild, the bird would sometimes look at the morning sun and most, would most improperly flutter its wings. Sometimes it even tried with its small beak to break out of the cage. The policeman said, what impertinence. Right away, the iron smith rushed to the school with furnace, anvil, and hammer. What banging and crashing. And the iron chain was forged right away, and the bird's wings were clipped as well. Grim face, the royal relatives complained, in this country, birds are not only stupid, they are also ungrateful. And then the scholars set up a racket with pen in one hand and spear in the other so loud that it can only be called true education. The Ireland Smith did brisk business, his wife got gold ornaments, and pleased with the policeman's vigilance, the king richly rewarded him. The bird died. No one knew when. That nag of a critic spread the rumor, the bird is dead. The king called his nephew and asked, what is this idea? The nephew replied, the bird's education is complete, your highness. The king asked, does it hop about anymore? The nephew said, heavens, no. Does it fly? No. Does it sing? Never. Does it screech if it does not get its feet? No. The king said, bring the bird. I want to see for myself. The bird was brought. Along with the bird came the police chief, sentries, horsemen. The king poked at the bird. It didn't open its mouth. It made no sound. Only the dry pages of books rustled in its belly. Outside the palace, spring saplings wafted their sighs across the blossoming woodland sky.